Hi everyone, welcome to DevOps Beacon. In this channel, mainly we talk about DevOps and related topics. If that is something of your interest, then do consider subscribing to this channel. Do press the bell icon so that whenever I upload the video, you get the notification. Now without further ado, let's get started with today's topic. If deploying software is hard, time consuming and requires resources from another team, then developers will often build everything into the existing application in order to avoid suffering a new deployment penalty. This is the popular quote from author of Docker Up and Running, Carl Mathis. And today we are going to discuss about Docker Desktop. That is about running Docker in Windows. Now let's move towards the objectives. So today we are going to cover importance of Docker Desktop or what is Docker Desktop prerequisite. We will install Docker. We will see some Docker Desktop components or what Docker Desktop components in, are included into the setup. We will run the Nginx in Docker container and then we will end the video or session. So let's move to what is Docker Desktop. Docker Desktop is easy to install. It is available for Mac and Windows and it helps to build and share containerized, containerized applications and microservices. It provides simple interface which we will look into once we install the Docker Desktop on Windows. It has also latest version of Kubernetes and it also provides you automatic updates so your setup and everything is secure and updated. So that's all about Docker Desktop. Next is prerequisite for windows based on your operating system you will need specific configuration then you need to enable the wsl2 features on windows you will need 64 bit processor with second level address translation 4 gb system ram minimum and bios level hardware virtualization support must be enabled in your bios setting next is how we will install docker desktop go to this particular url here we are and once we are at this particular URL, you can either download it for Windows and now it is also available for Linux. You can download, download it for Mac also. So what I have done is I have already downloaded it for Windows and I have it available here. So now what we will do is we will start the installation. So once you will double click on the setup, it will give some, it will require some time to start the setup. We can also install this using command line. So, so now we can see that our Docker desktop setup has started. It is in initializing mode. The verify verification of package is going on. And it asks for your consent for adding shortcut to desktop we are saying ok and it will start unpacking the files here we are going to install docker desktop 4.11.1 this installation will take some time and here we are and here we are at the docker documentation page if page you will get information related to docker desktop let's click on install docker desktop click on install on windows here we can see the prerequisite as well as how to install this from command line as well. So we are going to install using exe, but this is the way we can install using command line. Let's go to our Docker desktop installation process. It is still unpacking. Things are going on. Now we can see that the installing stage has come. Unpacking has completed and deploying component status is coming here. So now it is creating Docker users group, then it will add users to Docker users group. Here we can see that the backend service has started executing and rest of the components have been installed and installation is succeeded. So now we can see that Docker desktop is available. Now we have our service agreement here. So click on I accept terms and click accept. 
and before that let's go to our presentation while the docker desktop is starting we can see that docker desktop components are there so docker engine cli client compose kubernetes credential helper and docker content trust are the components which are included with docker desktop what we will do is we will create nginx container and we will try to access nginx let's go to docker desktop we can see that it is still starting let's see do we have anything in container all images or volumes there is nothing one thing can one thing we can do is we can sign in here so we should sign in using our docker hub credentials so we have already signed in using devops beacon account so now we can see that devops beacon account has been signed in and as of now we are going to skip the tutorial and here is our docker desktop screen so what we want to do is we want to create nginx container this is an open source web server or it provides reverse proxy load balancer and http cache as well so click on run provide path to directory so it will first pull the nginx latest image into the local system so we can see the progress here and once the image is downloaded container will be created out of it so download is almost completed we can see image being downloaded here as well the image is still not downloaded completely let's go back to container click here we can see the docker hub image of nginx as well and we can see the status of downloaded newer image for nginx latest and our container has started as well right the port which it is available is 49153 and let's open it with browser but before that let's verify the images so now we can see the image which is downloaded there is no volume as such so let's go back to containers click on open with browser and we are seeing the nginx home page here and why it is nginx home page here because we have provided the index html page with this particular text so that we will see so let's go to command prompt and let's say we can provide docker image command and we will able to will be able to find how many images which are available so we can see the nginx images available we can see the containers with docker ps and say command and to get into and to get into the container what we will do is we will copy the container id and we will verify and we can see there is html folder here let's provide html here and we can see there should be index.html which is available here so let's execute docker exec-it docker container id and the bash to get into 
the container itself. Let's go to this particular location and let's see which files are there and we can see cat index.html and that's how we can see this particular page so this is how we have seen the nginx home page here let's go to docker desktop Here in from deck, Docker desktop, we can pause the selected item or pause selected containers. We can stop selected containers. We can delete the containers. We can visit it in browser. We can open it in terminal as well. So all the things we can do it here. So this is much easier. We are getting the same output let's close it now let's stop the container first so now it is exited and now let's delete the container so we have deleted the container the same thing you can you can create the containers from command line as well so for example let's run this speed the command and we will visit it on 8080 so if the image is not available locally it will download the image first so we can see that it is trying to pull the image and once the image is downloaded it will start the container in this case so we can see the container ID and let's go to Docker desktop and we can see the new container which is available here and we can see the image also. So this is how we can create containers and we can pull images. We can play around with different options for Docker like Docker stop or Docker remove those kind of stuff are available in docker desktop so you don't need to remember commands here so it is much easier now let's go back to our presentation so this is our presentation we we haven't seen any error but usually if you do not have index.html available in nginx html folder then it will give an error that no uh, no permissions are there so in that case, you can add index.html uh, index and this of the things will, will or should work fine. Now coming to documentation, here is the website https docs.docker.com slash desktop and what commands we have used docker commands like docker images docker ps dash a and this is what we have done in today's tutorial. That's it for today's video. If you like my content, please like and share with your friends. If you have any questions or you have any feedback for me, please leave a comment. I'll try my best to respond. Thank you for watching. See you next time.